I'm Joshua Bardwell, and you're going to learn something today. There were a couple questions on my video about tr uh, calibrating and trimming your accelerometer that I wanted to, they were good questions, common questions, and I thought they deserved a follow-up video of their own. The first question, and <laughs> kind of the funniest one to me was, what? Stick commands? Where has this been all my life? Why has no one told me about this? Welcome to the hobby, newbie. Uh, if you go back far enough for to the, like, the multi-wee days, everybody knew about stick commands, but apparently no one's been telling the new guys to the hobby about them. And I think the reason for that is that we don't do stick arming as much as we used to. Stick arming, you know, where you hold the stick down and to the right to arm and down to the left to disarm or whatever. Yeah, that's how we did it back in the days when we all had four channel transmitters. So we didn't have an aux channel free to arm. And that's, that's the workaround we used. And that's just one stick command. There were a bunch of others. So yeah, there's a whole bunch of stick commands. Some of them are super useful, like calibrating your accelerometer. The other one that might be super useful is you can switch uh, rate profiles or PID profiles using a stick command, which is interesting because you can't switch PID. You can, okay, so hang on, back up. In Betaflight, you can have different rate profiles, which you might know about, and you can switch rate profiles using a switch, an aux switch on your transmitter. And I'm going to show you more about that in my video coming soon about setting up your Betaflight based Tiny Whoop style quad to it with Project Mockingbird. I got a video coming out about Project Mockingbird, and one of the things they do in there is set up rate profiles on a switch. But Betaflight also has PID profiles. So for example, you could have one set of PIDs for when you're running on 4S and one set of PIDs for when you're running on 5S, and you can switch between them. But you can't switch between them using a switch, an aux switch on your transmitter for reasons. But you can't switch between them using a stick command when you're disarmed. So that's another one. I'll put a link down in the video description to, the, it's nobody was keeping this a secret. It's right there in the wiki. You just didn't know about it and didn't think to go look. So I'll put a link to that down in the video description and you can see all of the different stick commands that there are. The next question people asked was, how is this accelerometer trim thing different from just using the little trim switches on my transmitter? And the answer is, if you only ever fly in an auto level mode, like angle mode, you can get away with using those trim switches and you might never notice the difference. But the flight controller expects that your channels are going to be 1,000 on the bottom when the stick is all the way to the left or all the way down, 2,000 on the top when the stick is to the right or all the way up, and 1,500 in the center. And if you go look in the receiver tab, that's what you should see. And it's a basic part of setting up a quad. In fact, it's so basic, I didn't even mention it in the other video, maybe I should have, that you, that you set your transmitter that way. Many beginners overlook it, but you shouldn't. You can find out more about this in my ebook. I have an ebook about this, three beta flight mistakes that you're probably making. And you can get a copy of that by joining my email newsletter. I'll put a link in the video description. I won't spam you or anything, but check it out. So if you only fly in angle mode, yes, you can get away with using those trims. But if you ever fly in acro mode, then it's going to really mess you up because the quad will constantly be rolling and drifting. You can trim it. When it's trimmed correctly in angle mode, it might not be trimmed correctly in, in, in acro mode, you see, and it'll mess you up. So you always want to have the channel centered at 1500, the endpoint set correctly, and don't use those trims. Always do the trim in the flight controller, not in the transmitter. The other thing to keep in mind is that some transmitters, when you adjust the trim for the center of the channel, it also messes up the endpoints. So your endpoint will be correct, 1,000, 2,000, and then you trim the center, and that 2,000 endpoint comes into like 1980, and the quad rolls to the left faster than it rolls to the right, and things are weird. So just always set those channels up, 1,000, 2,000, 1,500 in the center, and then do everything else in the flight controller. Some people pointed out that you have to save the settings, or the accelerometer trim that I showed you gets lost. Save settings, the stick command for that is to push the sticks down and to the out to the outside, okay? Actually, newer versions of Betaflight, I think in 3.2 and forward, it automatically saves accelerometer trims. But if you have an older version of Betaflight for some reason, and you trim your, your quadcopter and it's trimmed perfectly, and then when you power cycle it, the trim is lost, that's why. So down and to the out. And that's actually also how you save, like if you, um, if you do in-flight adjustments of your PIDs or rates or anything like that, you need to save those as well using that. You can also do this if you have Betaflight OSD on your quad by going into the OSD menu and choosing either save and exit or save and reboot. That will also save the settings. The last question, and this is more of a, like a technical philosophical question. Somebody asked, why does the accelerometer 
tell the quadcopter which direction down is. Doesn't it detect acceleration? Yeah, you're absolutely right about that. Excel but gravity manifests as a downward acceleration. In fact, there's an interesting physics thought experiment that you could think you could do. If, if you were in a rocket ship that was accelerating at 9.8 meters per second per second, it would feel to you exactly like you were in the Earth's gravitational field. In fact, there's no distinction between gravity and a constant acceleration being applied from outside. The only way you could tell the difference is with some kind of external reference point. So the accelerometer tells the quadcopter which direction down is because gravity manifests as an acceleration. But here's the interesting thing. The acceleration of gravity is actually not any different than any other acceleration. So you may have noticed, especially on a bigger quad, when you push forward, when you accelerate forward, if you have an artificial horizon, the artificial horizon actually pitches back because that gravity is pushing downward, right, when we're hovering flat. And as we pitch forward, then accelerate forward, it feels like to the accelerometer, the sum total of that acceleration actually changes which direction it thinks is down. And the same thing happens in turns. In sharp turns, there's an outward acceleration because of the g-forces. Like if you're in a car and you go around a turn, you get pulled to the outside, right? Well, again, if you have an artificial horizon and you go through a sharp turn, you'll see the artificial horizon cocked to the outside because it's confused about which way is down. And this is something that really, it's one of the reasons why it can be hard, especially on bigger quads where the g-forces are more extreme, to fly really well in, in auto level modes because as you come around the turn, the quad will attempt to compensate for the g-forces of the turn because it's confused about which direction down is. And it would be really cool if, I mean, is there some way that we could work around that? I don't know. Maybe there's some computer thing we could do to work around that. But for the time being, we just don't have a way to distinguish between the down of gravity and the acceler acceleration of a quad changing directions. So there you go. That's going to do it for this video. I'm glad I could follow up on a few of the more, uh, more uh, pertinent questions that were asked in the comments. Thank you guys so much for watching. More micro quad tiny whoop stuff is coming, including my Project Mockingbird video. Look forward to that as well. See you guys later. Happy flying.